Hi, my name is Carlotta Berry, and I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering and robotics, and I'm also an open source hardware trailblazer fellow. My project is Robotics for the Streets, Robots for Academics to Engage in Service, Teaching, and Learning, and I have created the Flower Bots, LilyBot, DaisyBot, and RosyBot. LilyBot is my smallest robot and is used for service and outreach as well as for high school robotics. DaisyBot is my next largest robot and it's used for high school students or perhaps freshmen in college to engage in learning a little bit about STEM and robotics. And RosyBot, which is my research platform robot, which will be used for upper level undergraduates or graduate students to engage in mobile robotics research. And today we will do light tracking on LilyBot. Please come along and I hope you enjoy and stay STEMtastic. Okay, so here is the wiring diagram for LilyBot that we've made in Fritzing. So we have our photoresistor and our 10 kilo ohm resistor where the photoresistor is tied to five volts, the 10 kilo ohm resistor is tied to ground. And then the meeting point, which is that green wire is attached to A0 for reading the light. So here on Lily, here is our photoresistor. Here's our 10 kilo ohm resistor. So here we have the photoresistor that is tied to the five volts and we have the 10 kilo ohm resistor that's tied to ground. And then it's kind of hard to see, but we have a blue wire here that goes over to A0. So here we have our light tracking code and I will only highlight the new parts that we will use for this. So first we have the LEDs at pins four, five, six, and seven. The LEDs indicate when the robot is moving. Then we have a photoresistor attached to analog zero to read the lighting. Then down here, we have two global variables. Ambient reads the room lighting so that you'll know where the maximum is for the robot to move. And then the max light setting we have for when the robot should stop moving, that's the light that will come from our flashlight on our cell phone. Then in our setup function, we set the photoresistor to be an input here. Then we have our lighting sequence that counts down to tell us the robot will be moving soon. And then we read our ambient light at analog read photoresistor. And then in our loop function, we have a digital read for our switch pin that turns the robot on and off. Then we read our light from the photoresistor. Then if the light is on, we read the lighting again. And based upon that lighting, we map that to the robot's zero to 255 stop speed and maximum speed where max light happens when the robot stops or the, and then we have maximum robot speed when it's ambient because the robot's in love of light and always looking for more light. We constrain those speeds to be between 0 and 20, 255, then the robot moves forward until it gets to the maximum light, then it will stop. And it's constantly reading the switch pin to know when to turn the code off. And if it turns off, the robot turns off and it stops moving and it stops detecting light. Let's see what this looks like on the robot. So first we're going to turn the robot on. And what you'll see is that it immediately starts going at top speed because it's seeking out more light. So. When it gets enough light, it stops, which shows love of light. And then if the light starts to dim, it starts moving back because it wants more light. The darker it gets, the faster the robot goes. So once again, the more light I bring, eventually when it's basking in the light or love of light, the robot stops. But as I take the light away, the robot starts moving to top speed. 